Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Dobe campaign. We'll pick things up for episode 14 from turn 94 in the spring season of 209. So last episode, we ended with a bunch of unifications, confederations essentially, to pick up some land so that we can rush our uh, prestige all the way up to Duke. There are many advantages to doing that, uh, including some satisfaction that can help us counteract our difficulty penalty and help us gain unity really, really fast. Look how much we're gaining from characters now. 59 points. And this is before we assign prime minister and administrators to our court. We will do our faction council after we set up our uh, prime minister, which, you know, it's going to trickle down. Doesn't matter if he doesn't gain any satisfaction from this. We absolutely want him to be our prime minister. He's on cooldown. Oh, no. That's rough. Because we had to... Wait, did we have to use him for the battle? The proxy battle that we did? Yes, we did. Well, I don't want to leave it empty. So I think what we will do is move our Chancellor up and then move him down. Because this position basically would not impact the Faction Council. And then we put Druga down there next turn. So let's get that done first. And we'll take a look over here. I'm pretty sure I like the income. Woolian, maybe we reroll the city. I'm going to take the other form of peasantry income as well. Kill Yang Feng. No, he has a really good background bonus. A rebellion in the old dais area in Xuchang. I like that actually. But um, I don't really want to work on fooling. Zhang could be a much better choice. Let's go here. Let's get our commerce up. Let's get our peasantry up. Starting. Let's just help him gain some experience. Perhaps 10 turns. He might not even get an army. He might not even get assignment. So this might become just nothing. But we'll pay for it. Yeah, 500. Actually, that's the majority of our payment here. Most of those were free. And we are going to make Xuchang rebel to give Cao Cao a chance to pick it up. I know, we're doing so much for him. Alright, we're going to take this. Unless... I can reroll this one, actually. Because I'm trading the land away. And then they won't be my neighbor anymore. There is a ton of small things we have to do right now. Because... I want to be in a situation where we are uh, giving Cao Cao the best uh, possible situation for him to maintain this duchy title until we hit king, which will take a while because I fully intend to give up a lot of the land that we took. And because once we do that, we can uh, capture the south ourselves and then set ourselves up a bit later, if that makes any sense. Um, but to do these things, hold on, we are going to first take a look at a few more unification values. So with them, it's going to be rather difficult, and that's fine. We're going to use a marriage deal to grab Ma Chao and Ma Dai, using the ladies that we have right now that are sort of related to us for some reason. I think what they're doing is they're processing Sun Yun's prior marriage with Shi Xie's family to make us related to Shi Xie, and therefore we can do this. That's fine. Let's do that. Um, he's happy to give us that marriage. We're happy to take it. It is received marriage. Huh. Not giving us a penny more. Okay, alright. And we're gonna secure the five tiger generals. We have to divorce for uh first because or else we're related to them and we can't have a second marriage. We will go to 
the wife do the divorce and then we will do another marriage this one might cost us a bit ah he hates his son even more great he's like didn't we just become in-laws I'm like that one didn't count he was wounded when you delivered him over so we're gonna get rid of your heir, your son, who you don't like, who doesn't like you as well. Alright, we're also going to make this divorce happen because I don't want them to stay married. Where is this girl? There she is. Okay, so I can't divorce on her side. You can't divorce twice. So we're going to use Machal to divorce. We're going to divorce this eventually as well. Maybe, maybe even now. Like what we want to do with Surin is going to be very questionable. Uh, we might keep her or we could just also try to send her back eventually. I don't think she's willing to spy though. So I don't know how we can send her back. I don't see her yet. I think she comes over next turn. Well, Macho is here with his Comet Spear, White Dragon, Fury of Seedown, set bonus here, 15 extra charge. Madai is also here with a White Elite, awesome. Seedown Lance with the Seedown Warhorse, which we do have. We can give him this set if we want. White Elite doesn't sound like something he should be riding. Tiger's Wing, no set bonus on this, but interesting that he has it. Alright, so this part is done. We're going to be kicking out characters. I just got to make sure that they're not equipped with anything that we want to keep. Basically, any type of item. What set bonus? Plus 5, okay. I mean, it's not good. We will give him... A vassalage. We'll give her a vassalage and we'll give him a vassalage. Zhang Yan's family. We'll just kick them out. Zhou Tai will send out again. Okay, alright, I think we have our plan. So before we start creating vassals, I do want to just check to see what other faction that shouldn't exist oh, yeah. Why you? that we can remove from the picture. So I can't get rid of him because of the minus five. Um, Liu Dai is also going to be you? peace first you before too. anything. Liu Bao is get Why rid you? of civil war first you before you? anything. Han Fu. Ah, we can actually get rid of Han Fu. Let's do it. We're going to spend a little time. This episode is all about fixing the map. We got to fix everything. And then we're going to continue on with our expansion into the Naman territories and re like, sorting through our armies. So what we're going to do with him is empty out his... I don't know how Zhang Fei's family is... Oh, Lady Saho. What if Lady Saho has a marriage tie with some other faction... That is now making them related to us. Maybe I need to get a divorce there. Before they have any kids. Because I do want, if anything, I want Zhang Fei's daughter to marry my son. That's the historical marriage. That needs to happen. Anyways, uh, let's take this stuff. So let's just do 3,250, too much, how about 1,600, let's do 17, that's four different trades, he's ready above, uh, well he's not above 150, but he will be, 750, alright let me throw him, a 750 deal first, 
Now he's over 150. Check, he doesn't have anything that's going to go to waste because that faction is just gone afterward. Alright, last one here. How many army slots do we have? Only one. Okay, we gotta fix that. Um... We just annexed Zhang Yan's group. Let me just fire them too. That's gonna do both things at one time. There they are, Liu He. And... I think it's her. Actually, I think it's her. Liu Qi's wife. How come Liu Qi didn't get to join us? That's who we wanted. Maybe he can still show up. Who knows? We're going to release her. Zhang Yan. Sui Gui. Zhang Yan Yan. No items. No items. No items. Heishan boss is what? Plus four morale. Pass. Now we have three empty positions. Unify? Did we get an army? He does not have an army. But we get the leadership group. Anfu. No gold item. Oh, down here. Petition. Genuine loyalty advisor's robe. Uh, nope. The wife. Art of war. We'll take that. Foolish wife, foolish husband. Really? That's that's the name they came up with? Well, Han Fu had a really bad ending. So we all know the story of him getting tricked into confederating with Yuan Shao. But what you don't know is that after he confederated with Yuan Shao, Yuan Shao gave him an empty general title, but no army. And one of his personal rivals who worked under Yuan Shao came to his house and beat him uh, beat him up so bad that he broke his leg, so he fled. He fled to Zhang Miao's faction uh, to live with Zhang Miao, just hoping he can live. And then one day, he saw Yuan Shao's envoy show up in Zhang Miao's faction, so he thought that it, they came for him, so he suicided. So Han Fu's life after joining Yuan Shao was a terrible ending for him. Isn't this Zheng Jiang's... Oh, because Zhong Zhang's faction is gone. Right. Alright, we're kicking them out as well. We got rid of their items. Time to say goodbye to the family. Go with your husband. Go with your dad. Alright, go back to diplomacy. Wang Quan. Also someone we would love to. Yes, it's a very easy one too. Also doesn't have too much money. Also should be not very greedy. Let's work our relationship up first.
needs to be above 150. That's good enough. Shensi 子君子之意也 uh, we're not 150 yet, but yeah, we need it. You get to keep one coin. Uh, needs to be higher than 150. It's probably a rounding thing, now I think about it. They probably have a fractional value, which is why it was showing 150, but it didn't change the face. He actually had two pieces of land. And he had a couple army. First heirloom of Wang. Treasure of Wang. Third heirloom. Second heirloom. Wow. Three item set. Armor, weapon, and a little piece, which we apparently all have, which means we got all of them through this. A military drum. Three daughters of Wang. Wang Quan, three daughters. I know nothing of historically, so don't know. Xia so, Yuan is with him. Hi again. Try to go back to Cao Cao this time, okay? Sun Shao. Wang Quan. Half Moon Spear. Ooh, this is a weapon from the Song Dynasty, often associated with the Buddhist. Um, if you read, you know, Journey to the West, the third disciple, Sha Sheng, uses that weapon. Silver Gilded Armor. So you're not using one of the heirloom, yet you took your daughter's earrings. They're not the famous Wang clan. The famous Wang clan is Wang Long's clan. This is the second heirloom. Bonus is plus five public water. This is the mom, who is an MTU character. And the set bonus TUP gives them is a horse. That's it. All the characters that we got are family members, and all of them are in the army on the field. That puts us a 7. So I think we just fire all of them. There's no need to keep any of them. It's kind of nice. We get to see all the characters that TUP changed and snatch all their items. Xiaohuan, <laughs> go back to Cao Cao. Come on, you can do it. And this way we also reduce the number of Han factions on the map, so the character is more likely to go back to one of the Three Kingdoms, because all the minor factions are being absorbed by me right now. Let's see our old pal Gong Sun Zan. Yeah, our military strength factor with him is going to be a little off. We could be a negative 1.8 there. It's possible we can absorb them. It, it's possible. This one's impossible. We can't absorb Zhang Yet, and we can't absorb Han. We can't absorb bandits, and we, Han Empire, you can't interact with them like that. They fixed it after the trick with uh, Dong Zhuo that we did for one of our early game guides. This one's a little off, right? The major threat we can't fix, so Galgan's gonna stay on the map. 
This one's doable. Gong Sun Du. But I might not be so interested in doing that one. That one's not doable. This one is. We are going to get rid of them. This is the last unification I think we'll do. Oh, and then the peace, and then may maybe if we can do some of these after the peace. We'll peace out with everyone so we can fix the map, and then we can always return to war with them later down the line. But Ying Shao first. Also have a couple kids available. 8,000. Probably can get hopefully 2,000 chunks. Okay, that's fine. 15 is good. Uh, our values are a little bit off right now, so... Gotta shower him with gifts first. We don't need to put him at 150, actually. We have high enough relative military power to make it work at over 60, so this is good. Saves us a couple deal makes. Kai, I don't think I can push it over 2,000, so it's still going to be a couple of deals here. I guess what I can do... Also, I should check this, just to be thorough. Is also through food in here. Because he's never going to really get the food from me. When we confederate him. Done. Now, who did he bring us? A character without any items. No love for him from TUP. Yingshao was the, uh, the master of ceremonies for the court. That part is right. All right, the next step is peace deals. I won't release the vassals till we get the peace deals done. This is fine. Um, we'll peace out with Tall Tall first. This battle over here where Runan's messed up, I think we will fight it first then. Does this allow us to fix the situation? It's not an easy fight. The units are pretty good on that side as you can see, and they're inside a low level settlement, which means they actually have really good defense. A lot of towers. I do have a couple options here. Well, we hmm, should we try? I don't. I, I'm I'm totally against the Ben surrender. So, what I want to do is I want to make Liu Bei the lead. We lose the ten percent capture, which is fine. There's no one there that I want to capture. We could also swap if we want. Like we don't need this item anymore. For the replenishment, it's really nice. Ah, we'll, we'll debate that later. But. We'll get formations for Turtle, and we can run the Fire Archers up and burn the town. That way there would be no defense. So let's fight this first, and then we'll come back and work the peace deals out. Of course it rains when we are trying to pull off a fire maneuver. Um, we can also go where there's less towers, and just park our troops here. In case they charge out, that's... Also a possibility. We can still burn down the towers. It's just a lot more difficult in the rain. Let's see what they do.
They're not interested in coming out. No surprise there. Move in to take on the tower shots, and then we will burn the towers. See, if it weren't raining, a few shots, the whole town burns, and that's minus 20 morale, and then minus 15 from night battle. Even though they're mostly good units, some of the bad ones will actually dip quite hard. Can I get a duel? The answer is no for now. We'll see if that changes later on. Alright, we want them to move into a comfortable area where we can expect some room for our units to walk up and fire. The towers are a little bit dumb. They don't switch targets. Like, they don't go find the lowest, you know, range block chance units. Oh, that's actually pretty fast. We got the fire percentage up quite fast with these units. Success. Okay. That neutralized the most difficult part of this. Someone did get shot because I think he walked up too close. Took a couple misplaced arrows. They missed into us. Now what do we want to do? Hmm. Given our weak units, and we do have weak units, but strong generals. Defender of Hebei. Yeah, there's no way we can go melee into these guys, right? That's suicide against Defender of Hebei. With what we have. I was really counting on burn the whole town type of strategy. Hmm, we shift. We're gonna force them to shift with us. Still getting a little bit of spread, but not much. Capturing this doesn't mean much. But I want my units to have a chance inside. It's a lot of overlapping towers there. I want to give the tower something to hit. And we'll have just... It doesn't matter, we'll use all, all four of them. Alright, they're getting shot at. Time to make a move. Apparently, oh no, one volley. Oh, actually, one volley is good enough. Be patient. Wait for them all to engage first. So they don't get shot by accident. Okay, good. I think we're good. Yeah, we're getting shot by accident. Can't see the tower click. There we go. Spear units. Did that one not burn? Alright, there we go. Who shoot? Oh, the tower's still shooting at me. Let me capture these. 
I still don't know how to win this fight, though. I don't see a way to win this thing. Like, I can pick off a few units here and there. Tower is still shooting me on the inside. If I can't duel them and lower their morale by killing their generals, I don't see a lot of options here. We might take the draw and hope for a, a non-rainy battle, to be honest. Hmm, they're responding correctly. I was hoping to pick off a couple of their range units by themselves. Let's see if I can draw them out. Just like a small group. Oh, oh! That's exactly what we want. If we can't duel you, we'll just whack you to death. We, we need the morale drop. Mm, not dying. Routing is not the same. Come back out. Doing formations and stuff. I guess we can go get shot and take that tower down. We can take this. Alright, we just have to pick units off one by one, I guess. Non-spear units. Right, I doubt they'll come back. Please don't come back. Oh, they got a couple towers back. Ah, that's where the oil puddle is. All right, come, come to us, come to us. We'll fight you guys right here. Oh, exposed general. She rather duel than uh, get killed. Smart girl. Wait, where's the oil? There we go. This is good, because now we get a kill. Lady Liu, though, is uh, the wife of Yuan Shao. I think she has resiliency, so we don't have to worry about actually killing her. All right, we don't want to mess with those spear walls. We don't want to lose our horse. Hmm? Aren't they on this side? There we go. Got terror activated, got scare activated. That's like at least eight points drop in morale. Getting attacked by cavalry is a big drop, too. Yeah, we'll pick off all the range units they have. Too bad Jungfei doesn't have his roar. Or else we can try to group everyone together, do one roar, and just win the battle. As long as everyone get roared on at the same time, it's an auto win. Um, assuming there's no unbreakables. Ooh, we're getting closed in here. I'm just not going to charge. We're just going to click far away, which is how you don't charge at spear walls. They're throwing traps on the ground. We'll pop out. Make sure they don't come back. Getting shot by towers doing that. It's not. We have another two crossbow units here that we want to pick on. Axe band we can pick on as well. Also low morale, militia tier units. I get a duel. Oh, we can. Guan Yu, Guan Yu, Guan Yu, Guan Yu, Guan Yu, Guan Yu. He's just too low. She's never going to change her tune. Oh, we don't want to run around the spear. Gwani's going to take care of that, no problem. I have full faith. 
All of them are coming back. While you killed. Gonna run some of our units in. We might win this one in time, hopefully. I think the other general died too, so they all lost morale for losing their general. This might be a bit suicidal. Alright, just want to get rid of that so our archers can actually get in here and do some stuff. Why you, can you do it? We'll come help. We'll try to create some situation here. We just gotta work on the weakest unit first. Work from a militia. Go for a chain routing situation. He's just trying to keep them from firing. Is the path... You know, I'm trying to attack this. Okay, that might have worked. I shift past it. Good, we're chasing them out. The E-Archers can fire while moving, so they're doing just that. We have their square. That's going to lower their morale by another 10 points. Now we're just going to dive in here and try to use our generals as much as we can. We could get dismounted. It's fine. We could also get knocked out, which will make the other two brothers infuriated and uh, stronger. We're going to come flank with cavalrys as well. Get our archers in the right place and just start firing, please. We'll come here, try to hold them up. Fire, 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 guys. Good, good, good. Dump your abilities. Yobei's still on his horse. Jonfei's still on his horse. Guanyu's still on his horse. Alright, a lot of them are losing enough morale to be routed. Some of the elite units are still fighting on. Defender Hebei in particular, very hard to route. Focus on the, the cavalry, actually. So we'll do cataphracts. Try to do some damage to them when they're retreating. Just trying to hold them up over here. I guess we could drop the formation, move a little faster. Alright. This is the only unit that's not broken. We did it! Within a time limit. Alright, not bad. I thought this one was kind of going to be hopeless with the rain. Alrighty, not bad. Oh, that's a lot of Imperial favor loss though, but it's fine. Zhang Xiangyang, we'll let you go. We're trying to talk peace here. Okay, we're gonna talk some peace deals now, because I think that's the last territory we really want to fix before the trade deal, uh, the peace deals start coming in. Any... No, no change here. So let's hold hold first. <laughs> Three Kingdom is over, guys. We're going to actually just absorb the other two kingdoms right here. Um, no, we're not doing that. Uh, we're going to peace and... Yeah, yeah, we're just going to peace and we're going to actually... Oh my god, gift him stuff. What can you even... What can we even ask from him? I don't want any of those because I want to encourage him to come back to war with me. Does he have anything he's not using? No. Oh, also... We need to get a few divorces in order. So we were married to her. Great stuff. Now we're going to be divorced to her, as is in history. And we're actually pretty close to when they divorce. I think Liu Bei left around 211, and that's when they separated for good. They had a terrible marriage for about a year. Um, it was so bad that Liu Bei built a smaller like a fort outside of the city area where she can live there. 
so she can just because she was a very spoiled princess sort of character and she brought a lot of personal guards with her so they would be like entourage on the street terrorizing the civilians doing whatever she wanted and nobody couldn't control her and basically you know when Liu Bei went off to the Yi province for his campaign it was good riddance she took a boat went back to Wu and that was the separation we're not doing it for those reasons. We just don't want any weird relationship messing up our future son's marriage, which is actually important. So this will be a divorce. She'll lose some happiness. We can deal with that. You're officially heir. No bonuses for that, but that's fine. It was nice having this historical marriage, but I think her prior marriages and relationship are messing up Zhang Fei's family. So we're going to also get the divorce here. Which hopefully eliminates Zhang Fei and his kids as family. I don't see the symbol anymore. Good. Good. We fixed it. Our son can have his wife in seven years or, you know, 30 turns, 35 turns. That part is done. Now let's have our peace. We don't want any of that. We don't have any items to request. How about you just pay us? You don't have much cash, but you do make a bunch of money. Oh no, he has a bunch of cash. Because, oh, he makes a lot of money then couple of thousand per turn I'm impressed with your economy give me give me a quarter of that oh this is so much better though like if I make this 2,000 it's still better than taking this 5,000 so if I make this Okay, little less than half, 40 some odd percent. We'll take that. That's one piece deal. You're not getting any of my land. Although this piece of land have, eh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it there or something like that. Do you have any items? No. Okay, fine. How much do you make? A uh, decent amount as well. Let's go with half of that. Take a look. We're less than generous. Close. Oh, no, no, no. That. What about how much cash are you holding? You don't have much cash. I'm surprised. Okay, that also means we pieced out with his vassals, which is very key because we might absorb them and give the land over to Tal Tal to basically fight his battle of uh, his his um battle of Gwendu for him, essentially giving him the land that he should have won over in that battle. Okay, I know you don't make much. Oh, wait. Right, there's a shift balance, not just this number. Alright, I think we pieced out with all the Han factions except for the Civil War. Right, those we can't do anything about. Now, let's see. This would not work. What about Kong Rong? This would not work. This this will work. Gogan, Gogan, I thought couldn't work earlier. Just double checking. Yeah, it doesn't work here. 
could, we could do an ultimatum. And that's not going to work either. That's totally not going to work. I don't know where he... Like, how does he think he has relative military strength against us like that value? Um, no idea. This one's close. It's going to be two points. Maybe when we build out more armies, we'll do that. No, this one isn't going to work. I think Gongsun Du was only one that will work, but like the land, it's so far away that I don't really care about it. Alright, we're good. Unification's all done. It's all about making the map look right now. So that involves some work down here and a lot of work up here. We're going to start losing prestige and that's fine because we already hit Duke. We got those bonuses for Duke. We're not giving those back. And we still have this. Let's see if we're happy with the results now. I don't like Jiangxia. Can we get a different city? Zhangke, I love that one. Take that. No, 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 no. Ah, still Xuchang, even though we're not at war with them anymore. All right, seems like this is what we're going to get. Just whether do I care about this. This is not going to matter for anyone. Maybe we'll just take the bonus experience for the troops in his army, which actually matters. Finally did our faction council. All right, we got a rebel group here. Remember, we lowered the level to one, so there's no garrison. So if he doesn't have an army, he might have army. But like, if he doesn't, this one gets taken by rebels. And then maybe Tal Tal can go grab it, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Speaking of Tal Tal, we're going to start showering him with gifts. Here, take the most lucrative commandery in all of China before the Three Kingdom mess, Nanyang. Now, the problem with Nanyang is... After Cao Cao took over in the Jin province, it became his buffer zone, right? He held the northern sliver of the Jin province, and Liu Bei's forces held here. Eventually, Sun Quan's forces retook this, Lu Meng, snuck attack Guan Yu, and took most of the south, leaving Liu Bei with just a little piece here. And the most frontline area was Xiangyang. That's where uh, well, Fan Cheng and Xiangyang are like sister cities across the, side of the different sides of the river. And... They are defended by Cao Ren's forces. So Cao Ren's governance of the Jin province was very brutal. Pretty much turned it into a labor camp. So wasn't very wealthy. Cao Cao had a policy of migrating the population that bordered the Yangtze River. Because Sun Quan had some holdings north of the river as well. You don't actually just use the river as a defense. You take the other side as well and have the ports under your control. There's no point only having one side of the river. If your navy's that dominant, you should hold both sides. So what Cao Cao did was just this buffer zone here. He migrated everyone north, didn't have farm in this area, forced Sun Quan, if he wants to launch an invasion north, he has to bring his own food, which is why Hefei was so key, because uh, the game doesn't do a really good job of showing the river systems, the minor ones. You can kind of make out some rivers, but essentially, Hefei was sitting on an inland river, uh, this lake right here. Um, so from this Yangtze River, there's little rivers that goes to the lake. And from this lake, there's little rivers that goes to Hefei that leads to a river north and goes all the way up. And these river systems are very important because if you bring food for an army of 100,000, you don't want to bring it on carts, right? Because then you need a lot of men to guard the carts. They have to eat food as they move the carts north. If they are on ships, then you need very little manpower to guard the food, and it's safe, easy to transport, and you can bring a lot of them. That's why Hefei was so important. It was a crucial choke point for the supply route if Sun Quan wants to move farther north. Or else he has to just march through the Xu province with food somehow delivered to him along the way, because Cao Cao migrated most of the population away and left the land barren on purpose. So yeah, that was kind of the... The situation at the time which is bringing us back to the situation here how do we how do we get the land mess to work in his favor is it just going to be free gifts or am i going to get paid for them i feel like i should get paid for 10 turns cripple him a little bit We 
did a lot of work. Pretty much the last two episodes is us fixing diplomacy to get this to work. Here, take the take the capital area too. You're gonna run out of cash, pretty sure. That's all he has. Give us cash payment as well. I know you're holding on to a bunch. And what else can I give him? The capital city of Luoyang. He's out of money. We fought this back. I'm not giving it back to him this turn just because I'm still sitting on it. You can have Hulao pass. Uh, he doesn't have money now. He doesn't have item either. This one has to be free. Take it. Can I give you the land across the river? No. I don't want to give them to Yuan Shao either, though. That's going to be awkward. Maybe I do give them to Yuan Shao. But I don't want him to be... I can also give them to Dongmin. But I kind of worry about Dongmin becoming one of the Three Kingdoms while well, he holds quite a bit of land. All right, Gao Gan's your lucky day. I know you don't make much. Oh, you value every penny. Good for you. We might have a food issue if I keep giving away these food land, but I think. One of the problem is Jelger is really tall, and if we fix this first, we'll be okay. Oh, they're on cooldown this turn, so I can't give them away yet. Jelger will be given away, Yulia will be given away, Gaudan will be given away, Gopu I don't have. I will let Sun Tzu keep a holding here. It kind of makes sense that he has a foot in the door in the Jel province, because after all, they kind of listen to him. Or listen to the Sun Clan rather than us. Um, how much food is this producing? Eight. Okay, that's fine. We, we, can, we can lose eight more food. Probably only like 150-ish. These land has a little bit more issue. Strong yet. I'll take that off your hand. Wait, I want it. Wait, what happened? This? He has quite a bit of land over here. Alright, who gets Unping? Who has the other half Unping? Alright, Yuan Shao, you get it. I can milk you for a little bit of income. Fine. Doesn't have that much land. Alright, our northern side is fixed. Runan goes to Cao Cao next turn when I move my army back. 
The south will be given over to them. Oh, here. Nanhai and Jian'an. Sun Ce, can I give it to you? Southern Jian'an, Southern Jian'an. No, wait. How how come this is untradeable? That is touching, my friend. That's touching. If I can't give him that, I can't give him this. Okay. Um. Then we need a different trade partner. Mister Tuobasheng. Okay, he's a bit poor. And we'll also give you Nanhai. I think we fixed it. We just got to do the vassalization down here next turn when they're off cooldown. Now we still have a bunch of people that we need to fire. The work is not over yet. We need to fire Zhou Tai again. Please go back to the right faction. These three will have their own factions. Shixiang, we have no. Sheng 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 we have no care for. He can go away. I'll keep Liu Yan's family because it kind of makes sense that we have them. Zhang Yan's wife. Goodbye. They're historically dead. It's just you know executed by Li Jue's men. Goodbye. This is Shizia's daughter, but not is she was born after the game started. So a randomly generic character. Not historical. Don't know who you are. You know, you guys with the generic faces in TUP means you are absolutely nobody, probably generically generated. Especially females. Like, no known females during this era is just rare. Okay, so we kept the three that are going to be become administrators. Alright, we're happy. We did it. Hooray. We have a lot less characters because we fire a lot of people, but we're still getting a decent amount of gains. We, we expect a couple more administrators going up. Are there any changes now? That whole end came back into our pool. Go to Tall Tall. Oh, I can send him to Tall Tall. Okay, we'll pay for him next turn to go to Tall Tall. Gosh, babysitting him. Tall Tall, I, I mean. We are going to take all your stuff for now, and we'll give it back to you if you come onto the field. Most likely, he's not coming back onto the field, but just in case. Now we overlevel this. This is our main food consumption. This is going to be interesting. I think this is definitely tax collection first. This is a rounding situation. We don't get to build two things because it's slightly under 1 million. Do that for us. Our armies have all moved. Yes, our armies have all moved. Now let's see what buildings we can do. Fulin. Fulin 
We don't need this for the replenishment anymore, so we're going to change it back to our own building. Gao Liang, we're not keeping, so why don't you just tear it all down? Ling Ling, happy with four build. Nine is going to get a state workshop first. Probably going to become a tall commandery later down the line. Build free buildings first. That's always our policy. Definitely change it to our version. Oh, no, but this is a commandery that we're getting rid of. So, Trisia's family can build it up themselves later. They're already getting free land, so don't complain. That we will eventually keep. This we will not eventually keep, and we'll probably trade this away. So, I just cashing out of all our holdings. Jojo. Haha. Tricia can go back and rebuild his city. It's okay. AI builds stuff super cheaply, so it's not going to matter. Which building are we not keeping here? It's a little bit of industry, so going industry and commerce makes sense here. Building an extra marketplace though. In the future for silk trade, maybe? This doesn't make a lot of sense. But we can get a reform out of this, so maybe we'll keep it for now. We're pretty far away from next spring, but maybe there's no rush to fixing this commandery right now. I think we're actually done with this turn. Can't believe it. Alright, let's continue. Tall Tall wants to get military access and he's willing to give us a silver item. How does he have one? I'm gonna say no. Just because, you know, for us. We want him to return to war with us. I know right now we're best friends, but it's gonna dip eventually. Reject. Ah, oh, Golgan, we gave him some land that he's getting picked on right off the bat. And he's picking, so people we give land to, they're like, we want those land. Yellow Turban Rebel. Wen Xing comes of age. High Empire loses another leader. Wang Jin, uh, unrelated, we're kicking her out. Another gold item from the weaponsmith, uh, armor smith. Good for us. So she's just generic, we're kicking her out. Wen Xing, though. Comes with a spear with a set bonus and an armor for the set. 5% attack rate, damage, armor piercing damage. Quite nice. Alright, another one family. Uh, he's supposedly the survivor, right? The one who survived the entire Zim province and uh, revenge seeking son. Um, we'll come back next time. And we have a little bit of vassalage situation. That shouldn't take too long. We're making a ton of money. We have a food issue, even though I just put a food assignment in. But I guess we need more work on that. But once we get rid of this, this 18 food consuming city, we're fine. So um, that shouldn't be an issue for us. And we can go to war. We need to summon the army over here to go to war against Lady Zhurong, who we're still in a war with. We need to wipe out Wu Tu Gu. We will keep both Mu Lu and Meng Huo on the map. Mu Lu we will keep for a long time. He will be the last lord. Um, I have no intention of capturing him in the end. I know it sounds weird. We just really want his elephant. Um, Lady Zhu Rong, I'm much more interested. Wu Tu Gu, I'm much more interested. And Meng Huo, I'm very interested. Using the Zhuge Nang event even. Um, so next episode when we come back, we'll get all the armies in the right places. We'll fix up the little bit of air on the map. And we're going to be working our way towards King again. Uh, technically, I think we dipped below 350, which was the Duke amount. See, we're negative 36 points here, but it's fine. We already got the bonuses. They can't take it back. And yeah, that's our current state. We are going to absorb a couple of high empire territory because we're gaining unity super fast due to the satisfaction fixes for being Duke. 
and we'll send out a couple armies to, to go take care of that. We actually have army limit to work with, and we're going to conquer all of this. Everything from here, Hanzhong will be ours as well, all the way down here. Uh, Mulu will keep alive, because this is the boundary, really, right? Jiaozhi, everything under Jianning right here is the Jiao province. Everything above is the Yi province, and the Yi province is ours. So that's what we're going to follow, and we're going to create the Three Kingdom as accurately as we can. It's it's looking pretty good, uh, minus the north. The north is a mess, but they're in the same alliance, so count them as one, <laughs> and maybe it, it's okay. We can't do everything for Tall Tall. He has to pick up the slack himself. So that's where we stand. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, and see you all next time. Bye!